All right, uh, this was sent into the channel by uh, Anthop, and they wanted me to take a look at their uh, TV antenna. Now, before people uh, uh, start yelling at me, uh, I'm not gonna hook this thing up to a television. I'm not gonna receive on it. I'm not gonna use it as intended, okay? Because I don't use aerial already, I use cable, all right? And I wouldn't have anything to compare it to. I wouldn't have any experience to compare it to. So I wouldn't be able to say, hey, I like this one better than another one. I don't have any experience at all with those things. And I have no intention to either. Um, but we are going to do those. We're going to do a scientific analysis of this thing. We're going to take a look at the antenna design, take a look at the preamplifier design and things like that. Um, and so that's what this uh, video is going to be about. Okay, um, I did another video on a different uh, Antop uh, uh, aerial I don't want to call them aerials. Back in the old TV days, it was always aerials instead of antennas. Um, and that was their UFO one that looks like a, a flying saucer. Um, but this one, though, is the AT400BV. Now, this one has an 85 mile range. It says multi directional reception, but it doesn't tell you what the radiation pattern is. So maybe somewhere else in the documentation we can find out what, what, what does it mean to be multi directional. Is it just forward and backwards or, or what? Um, it does have these little wings that stick out that look suspiciously like a, uh, a dipole, uh, but uh, uh, it is heavy. It is very, very heavy, so I'm curious of why it's so darn heavy. Um, let's open it up. All right, here is the uh, antenna, and like I said, it is heavy. It reminds me of a uh, cell site antenna, um, and there is a bunch of stuff here in the back, so I'm assuming it only works in one direction. It only works in that direction. Um, now maybe with the little wings on it, I don't even know where these go. There's some kind of extra antenna things. Maybe that makes it go more omnidirectional, but, uh, uh, yeah, this thing's kind of a beast. Uh, flat panel, smart pass, amplified HDTV antenna made in China. All right. Uh, F, F connector. All right, I think uh, we should try to figure out where these guys go. Oh, I think they go here. Looks like maybe there's a ballon in here, <laughs> or, or just uh, or just electrical connection, probably. So these must just go on the sides here, and that would make it that would make it omnidirectional. It, it would go uh, go in different directions. Um, Let's put it together so we can see what the thing would look like. People are going to notice this on your antenna, on your, uh, on your, on your roof. <laughs> I said, what the thing, what's that thing up on your roof? All right, there you go. Is that in camera? I, God, this is thing so big. It's very, very big. <laughs> Want to know how big it is? Uh, let's see here. It is uh, 30, three, three feet. Whoa, it is three feet in that direction. And it is 22 inches in that direction. So yeah, it's pretty big. All right. Enough fun. Let's see what we can figure out what kind of antenna design this is. And if these are just dipoles or or what. It's conceivable these are multi-band, but I don't think so. They're probably just wires. Maybe the coils. Hmm. Yeah, there might be, might be coils inside. All right, let's uh, see if we can't get the sink apart. Right, there we go. There's the magic inside. Very interesting. Um, there definitely is a reflector down in here, so it is going in this direction. 
and it has these uh, interesting shaped uh, radiators or uh, elements. I guess elements is a better word. And uh, the connection is made on these two uh, transmission, this transmission line here, and it's uh, connected to here and here and here and here. So, so the uh, I'm imagining this is probably because it's a dual band, right? This is probably the short wavelength, or uh, you know, high frequency, and this is low frequency, right? So this is a longer, a longer loop. This is a shorter loop. So this is probably the four, four to eight. What is it? Four to? Oh, uh, what are these things? Four, four seventy to nine, four seventy to seven ninety megahertz is probably this one, and then this one is the, uh, the VHF, so UHF, VHF type of thing. Um, so it just has a bunch of sheet metal. There's an interesting little doodad down there we're interested to go see. Um, but yeah. Um, so you also, when you're designing antennas, you're trying to make them broadband for this particular application. So you'll see a lot of uh, angles and stuff that are trying to make it more broadband. A rhombus antenna, a, a, a disco antenna, a, um, Having angles and systems allow the electromagnetic magnetic wave to set in different spots and makes it more broadband. Um, very interesting. They're all the same distance from the radiator, though, so um, definitely is not designed dual band for that purpose. But yeah, so there is a little thing here. So the connection for the aerial is here and it goes into a that box and then that box has a little extra coax that comes to this one little board that goes between so this is probably a matching network okay so let's uh see if we can take a look at that matching network <clears throat> Fancy, fancy. It looks like a filter. Okay, look at that. It's a filter. So it may be that those dipole things that stick out the sides are for the low band, and this is for the high band, and this is a uh, a cut filter. It's a high pass filter. Very interesting. Hmm. Alrighty. I think that's what it is. People correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it's either an inductor and a capacitor just for loading of this thing, just for uh, impedance matching, or it's a filter. My bet. My bet's on filter, but correct me if I'm wrong. If anybody knows about these things. Let's see if we can't go take that other thing out of there. All right, uh, there was a lid on this thing that I pried off, uh, but you can see right down there is a little ballon uh, that, that runs the uh, dipole uh, that goes out the two sides. So there's a, a balanced to unbalanced, probably uh, a um, impedance matching as well, uh, ballon right there. And then there's this board here I'm only seeing one side of the board. I kind of have a suspicion, though, there may be actually components on the other side that's a, that's a preamplifier. But this is a relay. Um, so there's a relay. So I guess when you can turn on and off the preamplifier, it bypasses it with the relay. Um, this obviously there's three inductors here. So there must be there must be active components on the bottom. I don't want to go any farther because I'll destroy it. Uh, but there's probably a, a, a preamplifier chip on the back, and these 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 uh, uh, these inductors are running running into that preamp chip. Um, those are just one little chip these days. Uh, there's really not much going on there. And then uh, once again, this is that. Uh, it's not going to focus. Is it? Can you see that? No. Come on, you can do it. 
anyway, doesn't want to focus on it. I showed you before. Um, yeah, that, that filter, I believe. But yeah, there you go. Pretty interesting inside. Um, certainly a lot of uh, engineering thought was put into this thing. All right, there you go. That's my review of the uh, Antop uh, antenna. Um, like I said, I don't have any experience with this thing, so you'll have to go to other reviews to see if it uh, actually receives better than its competition or not. But we did take a look inside to see how it was constructed and what type of technology it has inside, so hope that was helpful.